Why is there something instead of nothing? I am gonna go full force, late night, college party, guy chilling on the couch in a smoky room. Mode. <laughs> There is something because there just is. Because there there just there just has to be. Just because there cannot be a different way of things. It cannot be any other way. I'm reading this book called Non-Duality, which is a spiritual concept I still don't really have the best grasp on non-duality. But I always love listening to any sort of spiritual, metaphysical jargon. And one of the things that it said is that um, a thing just things. Like that's a verb, is to thing. Because to be is... is uh, it's not exactly what we think of as an active verb. But it is something that's actively unfolding. We don't think of me just being as that I'm doing anything. Because I'm, I'm just here. I'm not putting forth any effort to be. But it is something that is occurring. And it's like, that's such a, uh, I, this is where I feel like I'm walking to the deep end of full pretentious garbage and I need to just take a plunge. Um, it's easy to dismiss like the genius of, of being. That's the name of a great book. It's easy to dismiss the genius of being. The fact that there is something and when you just stop for a second and pay attention to it in times when things are just particularly quiet, you realize that there's no breaks in the frame. You realize that there's nothing inconsistent about whatever is. And there's no way that reality seems to have much of a motive except to just be. It's very, very freaky. And then you, you start to realize that you are sort of an extension of that. As they say, you are not just a drop in the ocean, you're like the mighty ocean contained in a drop. You are, you are reality. You are a part of what is. And not an insignificant part of what is either. We have no choice but to just think of all of what is as equally significant. Because who is actually putting an objective marker on this thing is more significant than this thing. As they say, I contain multitudes. And at the same time, I don't, because to say that I contain multitudes is to say, I have this set of multitudes over here and this set of multitudes, and right? <laughs> Whereas each individual multitude is still just encapsulated in all of that. I'm not gonna answer the question satisfyingly. <laughs> Why is there something instead of nothing? It sounds like such a cop-out answer because there, it cannot be any other way than for there to be something. But it's like that's also a stepping stone for a much bigger, more impactful truth.
Question is, what do you do once you know that? Does... <laughs> does figuring out anything about why there is what is help you to do anything? I don't know. I'm going to say, I, I, I will say, I'm open to the possibility, but I'm not sure. There's a saying, um, I can easily say that I have not gained anything from enlightenment. I butchered that quote, but... It's just a deep, resonant knowing. And we can take such great uh, umbrage with the fact that we that we exist because to exist is is to suffer to be is to possibly i mean not possibly to be is to stop being someday to be born is to die someday they are an absolutely inarguable package deal So it can be frustrating sometimes to have to exist. And it's all just about reframing it to understand, no, you get to exist. Everything that is gets to be. It does have to be, right? But it also gets to be. <laughs> Semantics are something, ain't they? Language defines so much of what we view as what is. It's how we separate things. It's how we define things. If we didn't have language, which of course we need to function in this world, how do you even look at anything around you? How do you look at yourself? I don't know. So uh, from now on, I'm going to start talking in sound effects. I just said something really sweet, so feel free to say thank you in the comments.